Hey guys, it's Chris from Chris Factory. Hopefully you can, uh, don't mind the fact that my voice is a little scratchy or you might be hearing some wing noise, but uh, you'll probably be getting this video after I shoot the video of the truck I'm working on. It's my newest truck. Uh, no longer have the 7.3 power strokes. I, uh, the last one I had, unfortunately, was a lot of being in the wreck and it was a total loss, so this is a... Uh, 2006 Dodge Ram 3500 with the 5.9 Cummins in it. It's a mega cab, uh, 4x4, 6 speed manual. Great truck, a lot of miles on it though, uh, 361,000, believe it or not. But it's been running pretty good, but ever since I've had it, it has had a couple of issues. Uh, when I first got it, it would smoke under hard throttle, uh, a little bit of knocking under throttle. Uh, turned out to be the injectors, so I've had all six injectors replaced in this, the valve uh, cover harness replaced on it. Uh, it was also leaking out of the uh, front crankshaft seal, so I had that fixed. Occasionally, especially when it's cold, it kind of, I mean, it'll start, it's just, I think especially when the grid heater kicks on, the engine itself kind of shutters down, the lights go down. So, um... I felt like to me it was having probably issues with the voltage regulator, which on the Cummins have been told it's a problem with the ECM, which lives on the driver's side of the block. You can see it down there on the side with those two uh, main wire harnesses in it. So I bought a new one, uh, a <clears throat> new ECM online, just got it today. So we're going to go ahead and install it. Um, the other symptoms I've had, I've had a check engine light. Three different codes, a P606, a P513, and a P2146. Uh, I think what happened was with the old injectors being as bad as they were, uh, I think they probably wanted to shorten out something in the ECM, caused a mistiming issue. Um, <clears throat> at least that's what my mechanic said, because um, when I first got the truck, I never had a check engine light on it until right before I had the injectors done. So, but, uh, given those three codes, especially the 606, which is an uh, internal ECM failure, it's what's prompting me to go ahead and replace this. So I'm going to do my best to walk you through, guys, through what I'm doing to replace it. It's my first time doing this, so we'll have to see how it goes. First step, and one of the most important steps I'm going to take, is to go ahead and disconnect both batteries. Um, Kind of, especially if you got any mechanical know-how, this is an obvious step. You're messing with a very expensive uh, electronic component. So, yeah, just go ahead and disconnect these. On my particular terminals, which I believe are stock, I'm going to use a 13 millimeter wrench. I actually just realized, and I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but with this other finger gone, you pretty much have almost a straight shot at the PCM, so... I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this finger out. I'm going to start by taking off these bolts. And seeing if that's all it's going to need to come out of there. So as you can see, I got the finger off. Uh, just a few 8mm bolts holding it in. And uh, be careful when you take it off because this wire harness over here is clipped into it too. I'm um, just going to get the uh, Allen heads that hold in the uh, connectors. And uh, I'm just using my Allen tool set here. And uh, it looks like there's about four or five bolts, two on each side and one toward the bottom that hold the ECM in. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Stay. Uh, I had to stop and go to work last night, so. But the old computer is out. It's held in to, it's bolted to the side of the ancient block by these five bolts. They're all 10 millimeters. Uh, the one up here is actually a nut on a stud because it holds a grounding wire. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, the wiring harnesses are held in by uh, Allen keys. So you just undo those and they basically pop right out. Um, this one you can probably get to if you take out the left front uh, inner finger, which I did here. Uh, these two are probably going to be best access from underneath the truck. This one's about the same. I mean, you could get to it from up top, but it's also fairly accessible from down below. You can't get to it from going into the left because uh, the frame is basically blocking you. But uh, in this one, 
is pretty much accessible from up top. You can also access it from going in the side too. Just a matter of what tools you have. So I'm gonna get the new one installed and we'll go from there. Alright guys, we're getting closer. New ECM is in there. It's not a real shiny piece. It's already got my little glovey grease prints on it just from trying to install it, but uh just take your time getting those bolts in. Uh, when you tighten up the harnesses, you want to be careful not to over torque them because you can very easily break those pins or those connectors. But yeah, the ECM's in, so all I have to do is basically reinstall my inner finger here, rehook the batteries, <coughs> and I'll show you what you do next before you start the truck. Alright, guys, I'm back in the truck. I haven't put the key in just yet, though. Um, your next step. Final step before you start the truck after you replace your ECM, you want to go ahead and turn your ignition to on. Do not start it. You'll see your gauge is trying to dance around. You want to slowly press your accelerator pedal all the way down and slowly let it back up. What this will do is it'll uh, <clears throat> it'll cycle your. I believe in this year it's called the APPS sensor, but TPS sensor. <clears throat> what you want to, uh, what it does is it basically um, shows the new ECM what the sensor's range is. That way, the ECM can kind of tell where your throttle is at. So again, before you start the truck, slowly press it all the way in. You want to try and make it smooth. And once you get to max throttle, slowly let it all the way back out. <clears throat> and you want to do this with the key on because if I remember right, uh, the APPS sensor is only powered when the uh, ignition bus is on. <clears throat> Another thing to keep in mind is when you first start the truck, she's probably going to run a little rough because with the new computer, uh, it's going uh, <coughs> to need about 5 to 10 minutes to basically relearn all the running parameters. It's going to be trying to figure out idle, figure out timing. So you just want to let the truck run for about 5 or 10 minutes before you take it on the road test. Alright, so I guess uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, when I last left you guys, I just got the ECM installed. <clears throat> I went ahead and went and started the truck, and it started a great deal. The problem was, uh, that particular day, when I first started it up, I had a check engine light with, believe it or not, like 21 different codes in it. <clears throat> and so I pulled the codes and I was looking at them and a lot of them, like I was starting to see a pattern, just like weird little random codes, but some of them had to do with low voltage. So, and then I realized that my back uh, interior dome light was stuck on. I think I turned it on when I bumped it, so I drained the batteries just enough that I think with the new ECM and the low voltage, it kind of freaked it out. But I uh, drove it around for a little while, and the check engine light and all the codes went away by itself. So, here we are. It's been uh, about, you know, three or four days now. I figured I'd show you guys how the truck's running with the new ECM. This isn't a cold start, by the way. It's just, I've been running there until day, but I wanted you guys to hear it. So with a properly flashed ECM, you know, all I really had to do was swap it out and plug it in, and nothing real special. Just like I said, if you get a <clears throat> if you get a check engine light, just uh, you know, go back, double check your connection. Just but it may just need to be driven around a little bit, and uh, you know, just like I said, as long as everything was programmed right, you should be good. Well, I'm Chris for Chris Country. Hope you guys uh, found this video helpful. Feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. Hope you guys are having a great day, week, weeknight, whatever time it is, wherever you may happen to be. And I'll see you in the next video.